was that was okay. Um, but hey, Laura, it's Warren. Um, I'm here with a tutorial. I was about to say I'm back with another tutorial, but uh, this is our first one. Um, so I'm here with a tutorial for uh, follow me around, and uh, thank you for your patience. And uh, I know it's been a super long time, um, but yeah, here here it is. Uh, so. Um, yeah, this is an interesting song. There's a few different versions of this floating around, as I'm sure you're aware. Um, but uh, I think it'll help if I explain sort of the main features of the song and kind of go from general to specific. Um, so the first thing about the song that is true in all the versions, okay, um, is that it's got a mixture of picking and strumming. So now if you're into flat picking, awesome. If you're not, you're gonna have to, you know, get comfortable with the idea of just picking one string at a time while your hand's moving and sort of getting ready to strum. So, you know, it's while uh, your hand is moving, that's kind of when flat picking gets tricky. But um, uh, that's one feature of all the versions. Another th thing in all the versions is really you only have kind of this one type of mood and this fancy word for mood in music is uh, music theory is called tonality and uh, most tonalities can be described in only one scale and uh, a scale meaning you know series of notes but um, this particular song takes two scales to describe the mood okay or tonality of it one of them is called demixolydian and I read the document uh, I've attached <laughs> your D mixolydian scale. It's just D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D. Sounds a little different from D major, but if you're not familiar with D major, don't worry about it. Um, then there's D Dorian, which is D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D. If you notice, there's really only one note difference between um, uh, difference there between Mixolydian and Dorian. Um, but those are two scales that describe uh, how we get the sound uh, that we get to this song. And when you put the notes that Tom is singing in the vocals with the notes that he's playing on the guitar and the chords that he's strumming on the guitar, every single thing you hear is described by those two scales. Now, um, how is that relevant to us playing? Well, uh, all the notes that I've chosen to kind of write out for you in this document that I've included, I'm going to refer to these notes either in scale degrees or Roman numerals. And scale degrees are just, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or, you know, like a flat 7 and a flat 3 in the case of this song. It's going to refer to a specific note. And the numbers there represent notes, okay? Um, sort of a condensed way to express a lot about music is just, you know, these scale degrees, this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight type of thing. And then the Roman numerals are going to be there to express chords, okay? So as you read through, you'll hear how it sounds. I'll play it and I'll demonstrate it. You can just ignore the document completely and follow along with the video. But if you kind of combine the two, you can really get the most uh, out of this. Um, <clears throat> Out of this tutorial here okay so there's the rhythm with the flat picking and the strumming right that's kind of what identifies all the different versions of the song and links all of them there's the mood of the song or the tonality of the song right and uh, once you kind of understand those things you can work into the more specific realm of what's actually happening in the song okay how does the song kind of structure all this stuff you can't just talk about all this stuff and uh, just come up with a song like this. Well, there's going to be some chords. D, you want to get used to this D power chord. It's going to be G, and then there's going to be kind of a D minor over F, and there's going to be a little bit of a E minor power chord or E power chord. You're going to do open stuff, and then you're going to do little fills in between. But if you get used to this, D, G, D minor over F, and then E minor power chord. There's four chords there um, that really show up pretty much in most of the songs. So let's get used to those here, okay? The first one is gonna be D power chord, and that's zero, 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 two, three. Mute that, okay? And then your G 
G, G major chord is going to be 5x0, uh, 4xx. Notice I'm muting the first and second strings there and the fifth string. So you really only hear three strings there, okay? And then you do this, which is the same shape, just uh, two frets down. That is your D minor over F, okay? And then you do a, which is just two, 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 two. You don't do any other strings there, just that. That's an E power chord, just two strings there. Now I'm still holding this shape from here because a lot of times you're gonna hear it go straight from here to there. So why let go? these anytime you're in this vicinity when you're gonna likely go back to that chord there's no reason to let go there so try and get used to that idea of D minor over F and holding two and three respectively second and third frets on the third and second string and then your, your E power chord and kind of this open chord you're gonna be pulling off to pulling with your fretting finger there quite, a, quite often song okay so again that's D power chord G D minor over F E power chord D okay so really there's the basic version of the song which can be achieved with those four chords only okay now I'm gonna start with that and then we're gonna get into the super specifics after this okay so it really depends on how deep you want to go into the song and uh, this particular version uh, that you sent me okay so um the first thing you can do is get used to the strum one two and and now what was that i just went down down up up okay now you notice i didn't stop moving my hand according to the rhythm but i kept moving one down strum every single beat so one two three four is what we're going to be doing down and then the ands, which are the in-between beats, are gonna be all upstrums, okay? So for every downstrum, there's an upstrum. For every number, one, two, three, four, that we count, there's gonna be an and in between, okay? So one, two, and, and, okay? Three and four, and again, one, two, three, and, and, and two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, and, and, okay? That's gonna be one, two, That's the first measure of the basic strumming version of this song, okay? And then the next measure is going to be sort of interesting. You're going to do some syncopated strums. You're going to go one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, two, 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 three, and basically that okay then we're gonna do that again so that it like after well I just looped it a bunch of times just now but really what you can do when you really play it is you're gonna do two of those okay now you notice I did a two measure pattern it wasn't just four beats it was actually a total of eight beats that kind of describes the full pattern there I'm gonna do that eight beats again so a total of 16 beats show you what I'm talking about one two That's two measures. And then you're gonna slide to that G major chord that we did earlier, okay? So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then you're gonna do the same strumming pattern, okay? Except we're gonna change two, three, four. Instead of just doing a two and strum, and we're gonna two and strum and move, okay? So one, two, three. 
three and four and one and two and. Okay, so now if you weren't clear uh, on the uh, part there, it's written um, uh, in the kind of intro uh, section I've got there as the and of two. And you see some notes coming in on the and of two. And really that just means when you're counting one and two and three and four and one and two and. It's going to happen right at that point, okay? And that's when we're going to switch from our G to our D minor over F, okay? And then you're going to you're going to do a sorry, down strum on beat 4 of your E power chord. So, we're counting along, counting along, and we get to the end of 2 here, and then we're going to do a beat 4 here. So, uh, in context, what that's going to sound like is 1 Two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. I just kind of smash down on those two frets there. One finger, two frets. One, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. Okay, just smash down. Then four, and you're gonna pull off, pull off. So all together, that sounds like one, two, three. And slow. One, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and. Now if you can link that together, you're a champ. If you can link that back to the original, then you're a super champ, okay? I don't know where I'm coming up with these, um, these are congratulatory titles, but um, you know, feeling generous, so super champ it is. Uh, one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and and two, and and so that's kind of what I'm talking about. If you can connect it back to the beginning, awesome. So that's the basic strumming version of the entire song. You could do that for the whole song and nobody would like bat an eyelash. They'd be like, wow, that is like, why would I say bat an eyelash? I mean like furl a brow. No one would furl a brow at that. It's uh, uh, That's basically the whole song, okay? But if you want to get specific, okay, there's going to be some flat picking involved. Okay, so I'm assuming you want to go further at this point. But the flat picking, okay, you're going to need to identify not just the string, but the fret, okay? And more importantly, the sound. The pitch of the notes, so one and eight. That's what I'm bringing as one, and that is an eight. I can't sing that low, but one. That's the first note of the scale. That's a D, okay? We've drop tuned this to D. In case I didn't explain that, we are uh, drop D tuning. Oh my gosh. Wow, I really hope you uh, know that. I'm going to email that to you first so you don't uh, get confused. But uh, it's drop D tuning, so you got a low six string tuned to D. And we've got one and you got eight. What does that mean? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, five, seven, eight. The eighth note of the scale. So rather than just thinking about it in terms of strings and frets, we're just giving you the the pitch relationship so that you're even more aware of what's happening musically in the sound. It goes low, high, middle, low, high, middle, low, high, low. And that's how the, the intro picking really goes. Oh man, now it's starting to sound really like it, isn't it? Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to play your 1, which is your open 6th string, and then your 8, and then following the same rhythm, 1, 2, and 4, and, 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 just like we had strummed earlier, it's just two upstrokes, and it's going to be on your open 5th string and your open 6th string, so you go 1, 2, and, and, try that, 1, 2, And 
so then you're gonna do an eight right after that on beat one. one two, and three, and four, and one. So when you're comfortable with that, you're going to add another note on the and of two, and that's the upper fifth string. Yeah, you've played this before, but it's going to show up again. One, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and Okay, so it's all written there in the document. You can see it's the first line of the, the intro there. One, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three. shouldn't have been muting, sorry, sorry about that. But you leave all the strings open. One, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and that five, five of the scale, da 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 da, fifth note of the scale, it comes in on sort of this weird upstroke on the end of two, okay? So be, be aware of that, it's kind of tricky. But after that, you can do another upstroke on the open sixth string again. So one, and two, and three, and I looped it like three times there, but you can sort of see that one comes in on another upstroke, okay? And then you're going to do an eight and a one immediately following that note. So what's that going to sound like? It sounds like I'm just throwing a bunch of instructions at you, but take it slow, I promise. Uh, it'll be doable, okay? So one and two, three and four and one and two and three and four and... So that's what happens when you add the eight and then the one consecutively after the one on the and of three. So it's going to go and four and six, fourth, six strings, okay? So four and, and four and, and four and, okay? And when you do that all together, it's going to go one and two and three and four and one and two and down for you. One and two and three and four and 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 one. Okay? Now that's your first line. Next line you're gonna do some more flat picking but you're gonna omit beat one which means one and two three and four and one and two and three and four and one and it's going to be silent there. I'm not going to do anything on beat one. And I'm going to resume playing on beat two. One, two, three, and four. One, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two. So you notice I didn't play anything on one, and then I resumed on two there. And so it's going to pick up kind of where the first line left off, but it's going to have sort of the same pattern up until the end of the second measure. So visually, you can see it. The first two measures, aka eight beats, are duplicated in the second line, except that you're missing beat one, and then the ending of that second measure is a little bit different. You're gonna have this. You're gonna have your third fret six string, open fourth string, second fret six string, alternating back with the fourth string again open. And then you open six string and you put that together on the and of two it's gonna go one and two and three sorry one and two and three and four and and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and two and three and four and it just kind of goes back back and forth there okay so uh what happens when you Put that together with what sounds basically like the first line is it's you're gonna you're gonna get this so one and two three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two three and four and one and two and three and four and okay so slow that down from the beginning one and two and three and
<laughs> Sorry about that. So that's the first two, those are the first two lines there of, of the song. So um, each kind of measure, uh, well, each two bar phrase, two measure phrase is kind of doubled, okay? And so you'll see the first two lines look similar, and then the next two lines look really similar. And that's, you're going to see this little S4. S4 just means slide to the fourth note of the scale, which is the fifth fret. The notes of the scale and the fret should not be confused. The fourth note of the scale is a G. And so you slide up to the G, that's your fifth fret. <clears throat> and then you do your familiar G chord. So you're going to do one, two. You know how to do this. We just did this earlier. So one, two, three, and four, and two, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three. So we're gonna do one and two and three and four and one and two and one, two and three and four and one and two and. And so what I just did there was the fourth note of the scale fourth chord of the scale, which is your IV, Roman numeral, just stands for G major there, so the fourth chord of the scale is G major, four chord, four strum, and then I'm going to do four eight, which is your fifth fret, sixth string, your open fourth string, so pluck, strum, pluck, strum. it down to your third uh, third fret there for your flat three note of the scale. One, two, three. Slide. No, it's going to be slide. Sorry. Slide strum. Pick strum. Slide strum. as I'm kind of keeping the rhythm with my head there. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. And it kind of preempts the three. That, that note preempts beat three, okay? And so one, two, three, and four. And one, and two, and three. Okay? One, two, three, and four. And one, and two, and three. Sorry, I strummed there when I just meant to speak. <laughs> but B3 kind of is empty. You can see there's nothing there. Uh, I've written it down in the transcription. You can see there's nothing there on B3. And then you fill in the rest of your D minor over F. So at all times, you're really holding this basic shape with these two fingers. And when you open it up, you add your ring finger there to reveal the D power. Point. So you can slide back. So. going to add the rest of your D minor over F chord on the end of three. So one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and... Okay, there it is. One, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and... Again, one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and... Okay? Now, um, you're going to do the two right after that and you're going to be second fret six string and you pull off that's what that p1 is about you pull off to one pull off to the first one on the scale put that all together you got one two three and four and one and two and three and four and one two three and four and one and two and three and four now i cheated with my thumb the first time but you get the idea it's the same okay doesn't matter uh, so again, I'll do it super slow. One, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one. So, and four, and one. It's pretty tricky, but you're going to go the higher part of the D minor uh, over F, and then you're going to go... Backwards. 
chords here. One and two, three and four. One and two, three and four. Two and three and four. One and two, three and four. Oh yeah, you didn't know you could practice backwards, did you? Okay, so you can practice backwards so that it finally kind of you, you add in more and more of the the rest of the line, the material there. So if I kept practicing backwards, it would go. Um, Okay, so it'd be <clears throat> okay, and after that four eight, uh, you got the rest of this weird figure. It's pretty easy to put together after that. hopefully okay so um, hopefully that is not like super uh, condescending or anything you know uh, it's it's not easy it's really not easy but the thing is if you kind of try to practice something break it apart into as many little parts as you can as I'm trying to do here um, but even if these bits are too too big you know you can break them down even more and try weird things like practicing backwards or just just kind of doing the strings, you know, without the left hand, or uh, just doing the left hand without the right hand. You know, uh, just different things that can kind of help you so that your brain isn't going crazy with too many uh, kind of instructions that you can't necessarily process all at once, right? Um, so, uh, yeah, happy practicing with those two parts that I kind of showed you there, okay? So now you'll basically play the whole intro at that point, if you can do that. And I'll link those two together for you now. Okay, so that's how you put all that together. You just bring it from the lines where you're doing a lot of open strings to the G major chord and then back to the open strings again because that's just your D and your G chord kind of rotating, uh, just alternating, I should say. So uh, once you kind of get comfortable with that, okay, there's more uh, material, okay? Now, for the sake of uh, brevity okay what I'm gonna say is read the document very carefully if you want to go deeper into the flat picking and the cording and uh, the fretting and all that right what you want to do is kind of understand the way that the document is written because every uh, beat is accounted for every string is accounted for every note is accounted for and what you're gonna do is if you really kind of compare uh, what's written with the thing before it, you'll also see how the sound compares with the next part, okay? But uh, to get into the, the really, really nitty-gritty of it, you're gonna have to kind of take it one little count at a time. So one, two, and then the and of three, and then the and of four, you know, just read through it and only add one part as you're ready, okay? But the verse, if I were to just play it and demonstrate it for you, it's a slightly different thing than the intro, okay? So the verse is gonna have some other complexity thrown in, and uh, namely, the end of the first measure. You'll see the end of the first measure is different from the end of the, um, sorry, the end of the first line. The end of the first line is different from the end of the first line of the intro, okay? So you'll see that. <clears throat> and it's gonna go one and two and Three and four and one and two and three and four and and three and four and and two and three and four and two and three and four. Okay. It's gonna go and three and three and three. So I'm pluck mashing down here on the. Uh, Third fret. And three and three and three and three and okay, and I've got your 
fifth fifth uh, fret on the sixth and fifth strings there, right? And then you got the open fourth string, and then you got the this next thing, which is a power chord on the two, okay, second fret. Just like before, but now we're gonna actually integrate it with flat picking, right? Showed you the original kind of simple, simplified strumming version. But here comes that E power chord again. So you're gonna one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and and three and four and that's when it comes in. And three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and you're gonna pull off on the E to reveal the open uh, first uh, six string there, okay? straight into the G major after the second uh, measure there, okay? So we're on two, and four, which is the same as the intro, okay? And then you're going to do, which is sort of different than before, right? So the verse uh, chords with the that stuff is different from the intro. You've got these kind of mashed down chords there, okay? So that's really, I guess that's a E or the F power chord and an E power chord, okay? So that's kind of what's written there. You'll see, you'll see uh, it's a F power chord and then a uh, e power chord kind of transcribed there to fit within that little space of the the transcription okay then the chorus okay the chorus is going to be a little bit more interesting okay so you'll get something like this this time you'll go you hear that so that's going to happen on and three okay so one two three and four and After you go and three and you do the chord there, which is the chord we've tried to hold all along every time we're in this position of the guitar, this area of the guitar. And three and four and and three and four and two and three and four and two and three and four. Okay, so it's very similar to what you got going into the verse, except that you've got um, a slightly, I don't know how to say it, it's like, uh, um, the notes are kind of rearranged, you know what I mean? So one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, So they're rearranged because you got, which is different from before, okay? So you see what I'm talking about as you read through, you know? Um, and then the second line uh, is gonna be, you know, you can kind of bring back what you did from the verse. So what I wrote there was the verse line uh, borrowed and then sort of a different line for the first line. So you could do the first line and then sort of the verse line, or you could do two of the first line in um, the chorus, which is different from the verse and repeat that or you can mix and match and you can really do what you want and just like show off your utter mastery of the song when you get all these different uh, versions of the, the same riff essentially down. Okay, and you're gonna end on the, the chorus with the same two lines that you ended with on the verse. You keep playing those lines until you get to the next verse and you just keep repeating that last line. And so that's pretty much all of the musical material get uh, for the song. All the nitty gritty, except for one more thing. One more thing. Now, if you're still with me, this fill is awesome. I love it. It really highlights a lot of the song. And uh, one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and... Now, instead of the barred kind of half barred E power chord. We just do the fourth string second fret. 
with your middle string, middle finger, I'm sorry. After that F power chord, you're gonna do instead of your you're gonna do single string rather than clamping down on uh, the sixth and fifth strings. There, okay, so it's identical um, to the uh, which one is it? Identical to the first line of the verse, except you're doing a single string there. Basically, you got your, you know, you got your whole song there, okay? Um, now, there's little idiosyncrasies here and there. Uh, each version is kind of different, but uh, one thing I love that Tom does that he kind of just throws in there sometimes. He goes, uh, ah, 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 ah. Sorry, can't sing and play at the same time. Ah, singing he's going and so he'll do that so sometimes he'll play the fifth fret of the uh, third string when he's on his G major chord one two around and throw around notes that he's singing because the guy is oozing music and uh, all those notes again they're all within the D Dorian and D Mixolydian scale so you can really really play with it the more you understand the theory behind the song and it's gonna go <laughs> different things with the song without going super off the deep end and you know getting weird with the, the aesthetic kind of quality differences uh, just different style interpretations and things like that but the idea is you can really mess with it and it's very malleable when you understand a song kind of at its core level of mood and timing you know just these types of things can uh, really really uh, just lend to very interesting interpretations. Um, but basically everything that you need to know is in this video and in the tab. Um, I mean the, the core chart with the tab at the bottom. And uh, the again the kind of what's written there is just sort of a visual representation of uh, the song. So it's nice, I don't know, the, the videos they kind of flow. The the video that I'm I'm doing right now it kind of flows from beginning to end and doesn't really stop anywhere unless you want to pause and re re go go back into it, right? But the, the visual transcription is nice to have something kind of frozen and static. And so hopefully you can see how these two uh, kind of learning mediums go together. Um, but yeah, I know it's probably a lot of information uh, if you've made it all the way to the end of this video. Um, but it's a great song, as you know. Um, and I appreciate you reaching out and uh, commissioning me to do this for you. It's just a real privilege. And I uh, hope you enjoy it. Um, if there's any way in which you're confused or would like uh, some clarity or insight or um, just, you know, if it's not up to your satisfaction anyway, let me know. And I will gladly um, make, make it right. Um, so I um, hope you enjoy this and, you know, enjoy uh, many hours. Um, with the the you know working with the song and uh, eventually you know playing the song for for uh, the pure enjoyment um, so you know who cares if Radiohead never makes a studio version of this you, you know Laura Laura will be playing a studio version of this someday <laughs> so there you go hopefully you can upload a cover on YouTube or something yeah I'd love to see it but uh, take care of yourself and uh, that's it from me bye.